conflict between India and Pakistan could plunge the world into nuclear winter. Do you want me to start telling you why the Pakistanis are being stupid? Or do you want me to start by telling you why the Pakistanis are being insane? Shows like this shift power and money. During the pandemic, billionaires have grown far wealthier. Meanwhile, as a generation, millennials are a trillion dollars in debt. While conspiracy theories rage, the true forces are more cleverly concealed. Scientists warn a hidden power struggle has brought us closer to apocalypse than ever. QAnon has been described as gaming's evil twin, a game that plays people. Mysterious clues like follow the owl, lead people to see evidence everywhere. All conspiracy theories grow from our tendency to make false connections, and they could be targeted at anyone. While real whistleblowers are very specific, QAnon's clues make people feel they are figuring things out themselves. Brain scans have shown that these eureka moments excite areas connected with joy and certainty. The discoveries are so personal that any attack on them is treated almost like a physical attack. QAnon has led people to avoid the coronavirus vaccine, set fire to 5G towers supposedly causing the pandemic, and of course, attack the US Capitol. This morning on C-SPAN, the host, John McArdle, got this fun phone call from a viewer named John. These Democrats are going to keep eating the babies and cutting faces off of them. <laughs> Q's story is grotesque, but another conspiracy theory has convinced some fairly mainstream media. Democracy and free enterprise go out the window, totalitarian government control slides in through the back door. He's talking about the Great Reset a global plan to tackle the pandemic and climate change, which some see as a cover for the wealthy to take power. The scale and anger of the response is telling. It's tempting to think it's a small, loud group. Just look at the passion of flat earthers. We're surrounded by walls of ice and My favourite part of that is the comment, holy crap, this is amazing, I'm going to share this around the world, which is quite simply perfect. Remarkably, around 10% of Americans think the Earth might be flat, but 25% believe the pandemic was planned by powerful people, a major reason to mistrust the vaccine. The problem with this theory is that the Great Reset was launched by the World Economic Forum. The last thing it wants is communism, and it has no lawmaking powers anyway. The true conspiracy is more hidden, but its results are everywhere. It's no coincidence that viewers of Fox News, for years America's most watched cable news, were found to be less informed than people who don't watch any news. Processing information which supports our beliefs triggers a rush of dopamine, an addictive reward. Comedians cut through the bullshit, and John Oliver's viewers beat all the news audiences on knowledge of current events. This makes Watergate like stealing a Snickers bar. Snickers simply couldn't hang with big hitters like his actual advertisers, My Pillow, Rectacare Cream, and of course, Sock Slider. It's true, take a look. You struggle. Uh, you strain. Uh, you're so far away. Uh, Just bending over to put on your socks is brutally painful every day. Well, not anymore. Introducing Sock Slider, the pain-free, no-bend-over way to comfortably put on your socks every day. And advertising isn't the only payoff. On media mogul Rupert Murdoch... I'm 100% his bitch. Whatever Mr. Murdoch says, I do. I would be honored if he would cane me the way I cane my workers. <laughs> Trump's tax cuts may have earned Murdoch around $2 billion. When a historian confronted Carlson, the interview was unaired, but it leaked out online. Why don't you go f*** yourself, you tiny brain, and I hope this gets picked up, because <laughs> you're a moron. Bregman had previously challenged billionaires at Davos about dodging taxes. 
1,500 private jets have flown in here to hear Sir David Attenborough speak about, you know, how we're wrecking the planet. But then, I mean, almost no one raises the real issue of tax avoidance, right? And of the rich just not paying their fair share. I mean, it feels like I'm at a firefighters fighters conference and no one's allowed to speak about water. When Carlson tried to jump on the bandwagon, it didn't go well. And no one's allowed to speak about water. <laughs> That's one of the great moments, maybe the great moment in Davos history. You know, the vast majority of Americans, for years and years now, according to the polls, uh, including Fox News viewers and including Republicans, are in favor of higher taxes on the rich. But no one's saying that at Davos, just as no one's saying it on Fox News, right? And I think the, the, the explanation for that is quite simple, is that most of the people in Davos, but also here on this channel, have been bought by the billionaire class. You know, you're not meant to say these things. Bregman could have been talking about Murdoch and Brexit. What the Murdochs basically want you to do is to scapegoat immigrants instead of talking about tax avoidance. I went to Davos to speak truth to power, and I'm doing exactly the same thing right now. You might not like it, but you're a millionaire funded by billionaires, and that's the reason why you're not talking about these issues. Murdoch's anchors praised Trump relentlessly, and a comedian found that the president could get away with extraordinary things. Drop the Donald face if it would cause Donald Trump to lose your vote. Would you support Donald Trump if he said there should be a registry for all Muslims? National Registry of Jews. I still see two Trumps in the air. Okay. Just because it's good to know where the Jews are? Murdoch helps install governments around the world. In Australia, half a million people signed a petition calling for an inquiry into his media empire. It was the country's biggest petition, crashing the government's website. Kevin Rudd called Murdoch's empire a cancer on democracy in the US, UK and Australia. The uncomfortable truth in this building is that everyone's frightened of Murdoch. They really are. And the fear is rationally based. They've seen many cases of individual political leaders and others uh, who have had their characters assassinated. What the Murdoch mob are after is compliant politicians, even better if they th provide them with taxpayer dollars. As Prime Minister, I was still fearful of the Murdoch media. It pushed for the war in Iraq and undermined global action on climate change. They've claimed that vaccinated people are much more likely to die from COVID than the unvaccinated. That's false. They've said that the real cures for COVID are livestock wormers and anti-malarial drugs. That's false. And here's the real doozy. They've said that the virus itself may well have been contrived um, by a group involving the CIA and Bill Gates, possibly with the aim of demolishing capitalism. That's not just false, that's stark raving mad. Politicians know what Murdoch wants, and they know what he offers. His empire has promoted and profited from a wave of populist leaders. In Australia, it helped repeal the country's carbon tax and push out a series of prime ministers. Murdoch's empire was a powerful force in the Brexit campaign. And there's a far greater risk. After Brexit, the more isolated UK saw its biggest military budget increase since the Cold War. It will be the largest budget in Europe and the second largest in NATO after the US. Scientists warn that we are closer to apocalypse than ever, as political points are scored through misinformation, enabling millions to indulge in their prejudices, biases and ideological differences. Conjuring enemies is a common trick, and studies show why it works so well. Any perceived threat causes a powerful reaction in our brains. The amygdala, two almond-shaped bundles of neurons, prepare for a fight. Dopamine, cortisol and adrenaline are released. Our heart rate and blood sugar levels rise, energising us for a fight. The rush of neurochemicals disrupts our ability to think logically and skews our short-term memories. This is why it's easy to forget what we were going to say during an argument, and later it can be difficult to remember what we said. Dr. Jean Kim said, The nature of anger 
is that it shuts off your cortex, your logic center, your thinking. It's literally overriding that center of your brain. And studies show that emotions are highly contagious. When we see lots of happy faces, we feel happier. Rage is particularly contagious, and the stronger the emotion, the faster it spreads. Professor Soberiage said, anger, fear, moral indignation, these types of things are the news equivalents of what we see in the entertainment industry, sex and violence. And they are widely used around the world by journalists and politicians painting other parties and countries as threats. So how can we tackle such a lucrative and dangerous formula? Perhaps an icon could appear to view charts without leaving YouTube. Here's how it might look. And keep in mind that Carlson could be a future presidential candidate. The core question, from what I can tell, is why the change? Is it part of the endless cycle of climate change or is human activity causing it? That seems to be the debate to me. And it seems an open question, not a settled it's, question, to what degree human activity is causing that. Is that it's not, not an open a, question? It's not an open question. It's a settled question. Human activity is causing okay. climate change. Professor Chris Reed is working with the BBC on reason-checking tools to supplement fact-checking using AI techniques known as argument technology. And YouTube could harness the argument web, a network of fragments of arguments, opinions, claims, evidence and reasoning steps. Over 50 labs are working on it worldwide, with thousands of papers published. All the big tech firms are developing argument mining AI to identify arguments wherever they occur, automatically stitching together the argument web. And by argument, we don't mean row. We mean a reasoned series of steps drawing to a conclusion, as Monty Python's famous sketch reminded us. I'd like to have an argument, please. Certainly. <laughs> I came here for a good argument. No, you didn't. You came here for an argument. Well, an argument's not the same as contradiction. Can be? No, it can't. An argument is a connected series of statements to establish a definite proposition. No, it isn't. Oh, look. I... Thank you. <laughs> if you want me to go on arguing, I'll have to pay for another five minutes. Oh, all right. Well? I'm allowed to argue. I guess you paid. I just paid. No, you didn't. I did. I did. It brings together the facts, history and context which are crucial for a clear picture. And it could highlight key facts during political debates. Chris is working to make all this happen at the Centre for Argument Technology. He's also working with the UN Security Council to build a more clear, complete picture of conflicts, bridging the most dangerous gaps. This, to me, is utterly astonishing that we have um, this venue for fantastically important argument and debate. And it's not simply rehearsed text. There's true interaction between uh, representatives of, of countries on matters of utmost importance. And yet, we don't read those transcripts. World-definingly important conversations are just beyond our ken. So if we can take those discussions analyze them for their for, for insight into what's really going on and make that available both to news organizations and to the general public um, we can not only conceivably help the process of argument and debate in the in the unsc but much more importantly bring it to a much wider audience once we've got this ability to analyze the structure of argument in debate and build up these huge maps of all of the ideas, the bits of evidence, the claims and counterclaims, and how they all interact. The way in which a news organization makes reference to a scientific article, um, the way in which tweets follow up on that news article, the way in which those tweets are then referred to by other news sources, and that whole train is then picked up in a, in a formal discussion in parliament, and then reported back into the media. There's this web of argumentation, and debate. And that web, if we can make it available to people, if we can surface the arguments and the disagreements and the evidence, and indeed the counter evidence, then perhaps we can start to tackle some of these deep societal issues like misinformation and fake news. Because if people have the information at their fingertips, they can see what the different authorities are saying on a given topic. Well, it makes it accessible in a way that has never been true before.
And as a result, what I hope we can do is to support people in enhancing their skills of critical thinking for all of us, right? All of us have the same problem of, of these kind of filter bubbles of information. And if we can break out of those bubbles, give people access to all of the different opposing points of view, that cutting edge AI technology is supporting people in being better able to reason, able to come to better quality conclusions. Imagine if your computer had an automatic reason checker alongside the spell checker. It could help you construct stronger arguments and see things from other perspectives. IBM pits its AI against talented humans in debate competitions. The AI creates a four-minute opening speech to which a human opponent responds. It then reacts to its opponent's points with a second speech, and after a second round, it delivers a closing statement. An audience said they learned more from the AI debater, and that's the aim. Like fact-checkers, Argument AI is more about clarifying and adding context than proving points right or wrong. When intelligence analysts discuss potential threats, AI could join the conversation, challenging their arguments to avoid unnecessary conflicts. And when governments debate budget allocation, AI could help balance contributions and priorities and point out vested interests. It could also suggest alternative options with evidence for and against. But audiences will continue to follow the confirmatory dopamine and infectious rage which intensify our greatest risks. What do you think? Would you value some independent facts and context with your videos? Let us know in the comments.